We're hanging out with some prehistoric looking lizards today on the Reptile Party's YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome once again to the Reptile Party's YouTube channel and uh, we've got some really cool rare spiny tailed iguanas today. Uh, this one maybe not quite so rare, but uh, the other two are pretty, pretty spectacular. Uh, this one is about two years old. Uh, so this is a Mexican spiny tailed iguana. Uh, you often see these guys around resorts in Mexico. Uh, they are fairly different from the more well-known green iguanas. Uh, these guys are tend to be more terrestrial. They will climb trees if needed. A lot of times you're going to see them closer to the ground and they're excellent burrowers. So oftentimes uh, when I've been to Mexico, uh, you'll see like holes or burrows like along the pathways that you walk through your resort. And then first thing in the morning, you'll see these guys out on the grass sunning and enjoying the sun and uh, warming up and having grass and leaves and things like that. Unfortunately, uh, the other thing I've seen in Mexico with these guys is people's habit of feeding them. Uh, even though resorts literally have signs that say don't feed the animals, people ignore that. Now, it would be one thing if they were feeding them proper food. You know, you go into the buffet, not that I'm saying you should do this, but someone going to the buffet and getting, say, you know, some mango, some strawberries, some spring mix and, and offering it that to them. Not ideal because it makes them reliant on people, but at least it's actual food that fits in with their diet. But no, I saw people tossing them hot dogs. I saw people tossing them pizza and bread and they are opportunistic, so they will eat it. But unfortunately, it's not good for them and it can cause a lot of health problems. Uh, too much carbohydrates, too much protein. These guys are primarily herbivores. They will eat more protein like bugs or stuff like that than your green iguana, but they do not need to be eating hot dogs. Realistically, humans don't need to be eating hot dogs, but here we are. So the reason why I'm wearing a glove, I'm going to be wearing a glove with two of our three animals today is because uh, they can be sassy. Uh, so, you know, even at this size, I don't want to take a bite from him um, just because they do have really strong jaws and really sharp teeth because even though they're a herbivore, they have to tear and shred thick leaves and flowers and plants and try and get into things like mangoes and papaya and shred the skin. Uh, but the cool thing is, is he does settle down. Uh, all three of them kind of settle down after you get them out. So it's kind of a frantic, ah, you know, what's going on? What's happening? And then once they're out, you know, I've sat with him for quite a while sometimes and just had him chill out in my hand with a glove or let him climb around a bit and stuff. And he, he does settle down. So it's just a bit of cage defensiveness. And uh, now that we've moved and we're, we're, you know, have some staff in place that are coming in every day. Uh, one of the things we're definitely focusing on is working with uh, some of our animals that are a bit more cage defensive to reduce their stress and to be able to bring them out because especially as this guy goes, and as we'll see with our other two spine tail iguanas, they are absolutely spectacular to see uh, up close and in person interact with. So uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful iguana. Uh, this is actually a pied uh, pectinata. So the family of spiny tails is called uh, Tenosaura. And so I kind of like it because it sounds like it literally would be a dinosaur. And I mean, yes, we know reptiles are closer related, or dinosaurs are more closely related to birds, but you still see something like this and you can picture like a, huge version stomping through the jungles 5 million to 50 million years ago and eating, well, in this case, plants, but uh, definitely, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, eating a lot. And so again, the spiny tail comes from the name uh, because they have a spiny tail. So the interesting thing about these iguanas is as babies, they're actually green. Um, the same thing with tegu. So they start off green and then as they mature, they change colors and become darker. Uh, as a baby, they are, you know, really small. They're going to be spending a lot of their time in trees, in bushes, things in the grass, and they want to blend in really well. As you get bigger, like this guy here, uh, you become less threatened by things and more sassy which he absolutely is, again, you'll notice a glove. Uh, one of my amazing staff, Lyra, did a handling session with him yesterday, and uh, he, he <laughs> bit the glove, and even uh, getting him out today, uh, when, uh, when Connor went and caught him and brought him in, uh, he said, so I'm only wearing one glove right now because the other one is in the bin with the iguana because he bit it and wouldn't let go. 
So, you know, this is kind of like the challenging thing of working with some of these species, especially ones that have been handled a lot, which he wasn't. Um, you know, the spine tails kind of have a bit of a reputation sometimes of being a bit more feisty than the greens, although there's some very feisty greens out there. The thing about iguanas in general is, again, those sharp teeth, like, and the strong jaws. The bite from this guy would absolutely hurt. All the time people are like, oh, yeah, uh, snakes are so scary, and what if it bites you? And then I bring out something like this. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like, can we pet that? Well, in all honesty, the one that's going to hurt if it bites you is this one. And it's not fun. So, you know, it is just a safety thing to, uh, to yeah, have the gloves. But, I mean, he's doing really well. Uh, he's not thrashing around. Uh, he's definitely very aware of both me and Connor on camera. Uh, I'm not going to try and pet him on the head because uh, he is kind of scary. But, um, you know, this is, this is really good. So this is part of working with animals uh, that are a little more cage defensive or a little more flighty. It's a careful balance between too much stress and like overhandling them and just getting them used to people. And we've had plenty of animals that, you know, they start off and they're like flighty like this, or they might try and bite or they'll tail whip. And then eventually they're hanging on your shoulders watching TV with you, which someday you would like to do, wouldn't you? What sort of TV would you like? Um, but I just love the colors on him. Like, so the pied part is the fact that he's got that white there around his neck, on his body. Normally they're more solid black, but no, I, yeah, I was very surprised. He was, uh, this was a Kijiji find. <laughs> And uh, I saw the pictures of the habitat and I was like, well, the habitat alone is worth it. And uh, I was like, I think that might be a pied. And then when I went to pick him up with the habitat, I was like, that is a pied and that is gorgeous. And I am so glad that I am bringing it home. And I can't wait for people to get to, uh, to meet him and sort of have experiences with him here at the nature center. I, I am so excited about the last one. Um, that I want to introduce you to because this is actually a very rare iguana. Uh, in fact, there are uh, two zoos in the United States that are working with them. There's several in the UK. I actually had not seen this species until I went to the UK and I was like, oh, that's a new one. And uh, a couple of months ago, um, someone I know, uh, I was looking at his list of animals that were available and it said this species and it said, please inquire. And I didn't inquire for a while because I'm like, that is going to be stupid, the expensive. And I finally bit the bullet and asked him and he said, well, uh, I'm only going to let it go to somebody that has a purpose for having him like education. So I got a really sweet deal on this, which is, you know, great because one of the things I love about what we do to begin with and one of the things that excites me about the nature center is being able to teach people about like endangered species and their roles in the environment and things like that so the last spiny tail I want to show everybody today is the Utila Island spiny tail iguana so these guys are considered critically endangered uh, they are endangered because of hunting. In fact, by 1994, it was thought that they were actually uh, ex potentially extinct in the wild. And then uh, the Frankfurt Zoo, along with other European zoological facilities, actually created a iguana uh, breeding center on the islands to help start boosting their population. Uh, these guys live in mangrove swamps on the Utila Island. Uh, Utila Island is one island off the coast of Honduras. One of the challenging things about animals that are only found on islands is if they're gone, they're gone. There's no going somewhere else to, uh, to get other ones and bring them back there other than potentially zoos and aquariums. So they've been hunted. Uh, it's also thought that they were kind of pushed to the mangrove swamps from inland by the, the spine tail iguanas, which have become uh, endemic on the island as well, the Mexicans. And hunting and habitat loss, uh, ecological damage, uh, you know, garbages, garbage dropped in the, in the mangrove swamps. Uh, they are apparently working on resorts and stuff there. And so all of that habitat loss is one of the biggest things that affects animals. So that combined with the hunting, uh, is why these guys have thought that there's maybe 5,000 of them left. And there's something like 67 of them in zoos in Europe and like, a handful of them at two zoos in in uh, 
in America. So uh, they were imported by somebody. Uh, they went through CITES. They got all the permits and everything. They brought in uh, young ones. That was supposed to be two pairs. It was three boys and a girl. That doesn't really work. Iguanas can be territorial. So uh, he ended up with the person that I got him from. And then I just, I had to take the opportunity. Um, you know, it's not, it's not about ego uh, to have, you know, these animals that are incredibly rare. Um, for me, it's, it's about just the opportunity to educate, to, to show a, a child in person or even an adult, an animal that is endangered, that they don't necessarily think about. Like we all know about lions and tigers and elephants and pandas being in danger, but there's everything from, you know, the, the Panamanian golden frog to whooping cranes to these guys that don't get that kind of coverage. And a lot of zoos and facilities and research companies and stuff are working to help them behind the scenes. But, you know, no one necessarily goes to, you know, a, a zoo and is like, oh, yeah, lions and tigers and Utila Island iguanas. It's not quite how it works, but when you get them there and then they can see animals that are endangered like this and with what we do and with how, you know, more one-on-one -on -one the experience is, I really think this guy here is going to have a really big impact and do, do really amazing things to teach people about the plight of not only him, but other lizards that are endangered, like the, uh, the blue rock iguana on the Cayman Islands, um, and just help them. Um, unlike the, the other spiny tails, these guys actually are dark when they first hatch and they kind of lighten up with age so they don't start as green, unlike the other spiny tails. And you can see he's really calm. Like, I'm not wearing a glove with him. Uh, he does have claws and that's one of the things that also is a reason why people wear gloves just because a lot of iguanas especially can really scratch you up. But uh, so far, he's been really great. Now, all these guys are primarily herbivores. But again, they will eat some protein. So these guys in the wild have been seen eating juvenile green iguanas, which have become an invasive species on the island. Uh, they've been seen eating bugs, uh, you know, hunting for crayfish, things like that. But their primary diet is veggies. So you don't want to feed them too much protein or you could end up with a uh, dead, very rare animal. All right, everyone. So I haven't named actually any of these guys yet. Uh, I think the previous owner was named the Pied Zoom, um, but we'll see. So it hasn't quite hit me yet on what to, what to name him uh, or the other two. But uh, yeah, thank you for joining us to learn about my, my iguanas, uh, my spiny tails. I do have you know some other iguanas as well, and we featured them on the on the channel before, and we'll we'll definitely catch up with them in the future. But uh, you know, these guys, a lot less common that you're going to see. So I'm really excited. And if you want to see more of these iguanas and you're coming to Calgary, you'll want to check out uh, yycnaturecenter.com. Uh, we are under construction, both at the facility and on the website. But we are hoping by the fall to be open and being able to do things like experiencing, say, all iguanas, all the iguanas that we have and having an iguana experience or a mammal experience or a snake experience. We've got a lot of ideas kind of in the pipeline as is the case of bringing it all to life and we can't wait. And one of the ways you can support us is by supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we have three tiers right now and uh, we're planning on that being part of our sort of like membership uh, program for the Nature Center. So if you sign up early, you're going to get some uh, perks before everyone else does. Uh, it also helps us to feed these hungry little monsters. And the biggest thing you can do is just hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, share this video. Uh, we keep creeping up with subscriber numbers, with viewer numbers. So that is the biggest thing you can do. It costs you nothing. And every time someone watches it, it, it helps with the YouTube algorithms and everything else. So please give us that like, give us that share, give us that subscribe. So stay tuned for more fun adventures here at the YYC Nature Center and on the Calgary Reptile Party's YouTube channel. See you next time.